Hi, this is book two, chapter six, part one. I often found my way up the numbers to visit Freddie and Bless, MacArthur up past Telegraph, and the donut shop where we cashed out our scratchers, past Home Depot where Freddie often stopped to buy gloves and items he needed to work on cars, in Dogtown or Ghost Town off Adeline. I made sure not to stay away too long for I didn't want to hurt any feelings. We were close. We were best of friends. And like friends, they wanted me by their side every now and then. And my life was incomplete without them. Freddie was someone I would do just about anything for, and so was Bless. It wasn't always that way. Some years ago, I lived on the eastern seaboard in a land I had all but forgotten, the Green Mountains. I knew I was unusual from an early age. For one thing, never was I frightened. Life there was peaceful and quiet. I had visions and heard voices which foretold my future, and the doctors tried to push antipsychotics into my bloodstream, but the voices did not go away. Not until Freddy came for me, just as they predicted. Nothing would ever be the same. This may sound unbelievable, and it is. It is strange, but I have long since forgiven Freddy. Once I realized I was not who I thought I was, how I was raised, something clicked in me. I remember we had just finished breakfast at the Merritt Bakery, and out in the parking lot with Freddy I broke down and he comforted me. I realized behind the rough and rugged persona was the tender heart of a man who loved me like only blood can love. I was one of them, I realized. I was one of us. Sometimes the lonesome sound of any freight train whistle recalls in me a longing for the days of my youth, but I have long since come to accept my place among my kind and the truth that I never was and never will be human. We have a long history of treachery at their hands. They once tried to destroy us on the continent. They cannot be trusted. I wouldn't hesitate to put them like water into wood forever if they were to cross me or mine. Still, I have love for the ones who raised me. I just don't know how to reconcile. Our ways can be violent, but life must be more than survival. I'm not sure what it all means. About bless. Someone handles stress unlike someone else. Confusion. Well, someone and someone else make two. And two handle things one might handle differently. Differently than one, the two, how they handle things. Not like someone, but like someone and someone else, which was me and her. We shuffled the whole deck of cards and drew from the deck from the top and turned face up the numbers, our numbers, the aces and deuces, the whole royal family. You see, when one becomes two, and two had the power of four. Bless's story and mine were much alike, and either of us on our own was basic, alone, overwhelmed by our stories. And so we became easy best friends, like aces that meet in a hand for a pair. Thank God I found her. You see, when nothing is clear and I feel confused, when life leaves me searching the ground for the sky, or the sky for some ground, I only have to find her, and I have found my way home. Same goes for her. The numbers brought something certain to the chaos, a mathematical equation the mind could latch on to. We played cards for sanity. Of course, it wasn't all sunshine and lollipops either. We had our deep blue days, moping around tired and stuck in some resistance, bitching about life, feeling sorry for ourselves, but we like to get straight to the point, because why should two be bickering when the underlying is lying under it? Better to cut straight to the truth.